Right, I've got a new piece of equipment to show you today and it's this pump action cutting oil system. You may have seen one of my videos where I made this um, gravity feed drip feed oiler for the um, cutting oil. Um, this one's okay for small jobs but when it comes to parting off larger work like this um, there's not enough oil in the reservoir and it was quite hard to actually get a steady flow um, without actually wasting a lot of oil and using the oil up too quickly. So I thought it'd be really good to have some sort of um, pump action system with more control over the actual um, flow from drips to uh, run and uh, I converted a pump action oil can um, with the MyFed ML7 or the mini lathe, um, there's no power feed on the um, cross slide. Um, so I can actually just wind the um, cross slide and every now and again give a pump on the oil can. This is already set in position and get a nice flow of oil onto the part off. All other tools. And... Um, it's much better than actually um, trying to direct a bottle onto the um, part off or whatever you're using um, when you're cutting and there's always the danger of catching the nozzle on the jaws um, so I think this is the best system for me on the um, MyFed ML7 and the mini lathe I don't want to set up a full coolant system on this one um, I'd just rather use um, cutting oil neat um, whenever I need it and if you set up a system like this you can even put a tray underneath to catch the oil filter it and reuse it so I've made my system on a magnetic base um, and I'll show how it all goes together in a minute so I can put it on the um, cross slide if I want to and use it for uh, um, turning a length of bar. Um, I've got a shorter tube like this so I can have it closer um, down to the work and um, you can actually have it um, in power feed with the oiler travelling with the um, turning tool or whatever um, to get that um, cutting oil right on the tool. Right, to make this um, cutting oil pump system up, the first thing I bought was this um, Wesco um, oil can. Um, very well made in Birmingham, England. Um, got it off of eBay and it already had this um, tail end nozzle on here with a rubber pipe which I took off. Um, if you can't get one like this, you can just get one with the ordinary spout. Um, you could either cut the spout off or just leave it um, long. For the plastic pipe or the rubber pipe or whatever you're going to put on it. I've got a piece of um, 30 millimeter diameter brass, you can use aluminium if you want, um, drilled right through with a um, core diameter for a 1 8 BSP thread um, and tapped that one. I turned it around the other way and bored out for a 25 millimeter diameter rare earth magnet which was 20 millimeter long and that one's pushed in there with some Loctite 638. Um, I drilled down through the side and tapped again with 1 8 BSP um, to meet this hole here. And um, I put in an ordinary 1 8 BSP compressor tail end um, with the piping, a piece of plastic pipe um, with a proper um, clip. And for the magnetic base, I've made up this um, PVC cover. The rare earth magnets are quite brittle and um, sometimes they can actually crack. Um, so I put a thin piece of um, PVC. I think it's about um, two or three um, mil thick on this face here. And that one just goes on the bottom of the magnetic base. And that also protects um, the ways of the lathe or the cross slide of the lathe um, when it goes on and there's no way um, that it can be marked. 
I found some um, fairly um, thick brass tubing in my um, uh, store of metals and I've turned to each end and um, die cut it with the 1 8 BSP um, that one screws into that one with a bit of PTFE tape and this is the one that I had on at the beginning of the video um, but this one is the shorter one um, which I put on uh, for when I'm doing turning or whatever and using this one on the actual um, cross slide so it travels with the tool so that one would go in with a bit of PTFE tape and then I got an inch um, diameter piece of PVC I've drilled and tapped this end for 1 8 BSP which will screw on top of the um, brass piece there you can put a bit of PTFE tape on that as well um, and this end here is quarter inch BSP drilled and tapped for a quarter inch BSP and that's for these um, flexible um, pipes you can get these from Banggood um, and I put a quarter inch BSP um, doughty seal on that one and that one just screws into the top um, but before I do that I put a ball bearing so it drops down in onto the uh, 1 8 BSP bore and what that does um, when I pump the oil the ball bearing will come up and the oil will flow um, but then the when I stop pumping the ball bearing will drop down by gravity and it will actually stop any um, siphoning effect and actually stop the flow of oil altogether so next the PVC tubing pushes onto the tail end of the oil can do that one up nice and tight fill up with oil and it's ready to go and it has a on off ball valve there as well so you can see how quick and easy it is to make one of these up and all as I recommend um, get the best oil can you can um, like one of these and you'll have very good control I can just press this uh, very slightly for just a few drips or I can give a long press like that for a run of oil so now I have it set up on the MyFerd I've got my oil can at the back here which I can just um, press the lever at any time the only thing I might change sometime is this tubing it's a bit thick it's all that I had in stock I'm going to put some um, thinner tube on there which will be a bit more flexible um, but you can actually see that that will actually drip on the tool as it's traveling um, and doing its cut
So you can see by those examples, I have excellent control over the flow of oil. The oil is always going directly onto the actual cutting edge once it's set. And I can actually concentrate more on what I'm doing, knowing that the oil is actually going on that cutting edge. And that will greatly preserve the life of these inserts. So I'm really pleased with this simple system.